Hello, and welcome to this video. We're going to show what a Fortric Mix Acutherm camera looks like when you open the box. So let's start. First, we're going to start opening the latch on the hard case box, in which we will find first the batteries, the spare batteries of the camera. These batteries will be charged in their own charging deck. You can charge two batteries at the same time by plugging the charger on the back of it. We have now the charging cable that we will plug in the back and the charging deck will show us the status of the battery. If it shows red, it means it has to be charged. If it shows green, it means it has been completed. Next, we're going to go to the connecting cables. First, we have a mini HDMI cable, which is going to interface with your camera to export and live stream everything that you can see on the display onto a projector or display using a regular HDMI port. We will also find a data USB cable. It comes with a USB-C. On, to connect with the camera, a regular USB to connect to your computer. This allows to use USB 3 speeds to connect with the camera. Next, we have a USB card reader. The camera can be accessed using the USB cable, but you can also remove the SD card where you can have one or multiple of them for your camera. With the card reader, you can plug the SD card on the side and connect this to your computer to access and organize your pictures. You would also find a pack of documents where you will find a certificate of calibration, warranty, among some other important documents. Next, you will find the neck strap, which we, it will help you hold the camera around your neck in a comfortable position, especially when you're doing long inspections and you want an extra support to free one of your hands or both of them. I'm going to show you how to put this strap on the camera just in a moment. And lastly, we have the Fotric Mix Aquathermic Camera. This is a, a professional thermal imager that can rotate 180 degrees, stopping in 40 different positions. A professional acoustic imager that can rotate 90 degrees with 162 microphones. It also comes with a comfortable hand strap which must be adjusted for each use. I must be sure that my hand goes all the way in and that this passes my knuckles adjust to make it comfortable for operation. On the front part of the camera, which becomes the lower part when I'm utilizing the thermal module, we will find the laser pointer. Once pressed, the camera will emit a red laser that will help me locate and indicate specific positions. It will also be part of the laser measurement ranger that will help the camera detect how far it is from certain objects. The second button is the AI button. It is a button that can work with Fotric Navi PDM AI system, but can also be used as a shortcut for different functions during picture taking, frozen picture interface, and gallery interface. On the front part, on the right side, we will see two buttons. The one in the top is the focus button, just by pressing once click, don't need to hold, the camera will focus the thermal module. The acoustic module does not need to, uh, to focus in the same way. It will automatically focus. The second button is the picture taking button. You will use it to either take thermal pictures, acoustic pictures, or the two of them at the same time. In the front panel of the camera, you will see the main navigation panel. We will have a center button to open the main menu and to work as a confirmation button, four directional buttons to navigate across all the menus. Everything that you can see on the touch screen, you can also do using these buttons. We have the power button that if held for more than three seconds, it will show the interface to either reboot the camera or to power it off. If I press just once, the camera will turn off the screen while the rest of the camera will remain on. We have the AI button, that's as explained earlier, can be used during Navit PDM AI tracking boxes. This button will activate so that the camera remembers previous inspections and 
it can track those components automatically. We have the gallery button, which can take me to all the galleries of videos and pictures taken by the camera, both thermal and acoustic images. And if held for more than three seconds, it will help me to do the recalibration and you see of the thermal module. And lastly, we have the back button. In the bottom part of the camera, we can see the connections interface. The camera has different uh, accesses to access data, images, and charge. So on the first part, on the, right, on the right side, we have the charging port. If the camera needs to be used for a long period of time, I can charge it directly uh, using the charger, the provided adapter, plug the camera over here. The batteries on the camera can also be charged directly on device. The second port is the USB-C. It can be used to access data and export images from the camera into the computer. The third port is the mini HDMI, as you can see over here. It is used to export or live stream images using a cable. The last one is the SD card slot, which can be used to uh, access the images uh, from the computer directly to bring a different SD card from a different camera using NaviPDM and all the inspection routes and all the diagnose rules that are on this SD card will be applied and I can use this camera to continue with an inspection on a given site. Lastly, once this is closed, I will show you how to remove the battery and place the neck strap. To remove the battery, you will see one button in the back and one button in the front. All we have to do is to press the two of them, remove them, and we will have access to this slot, which is one of the anchoring points of the neck strap. So now, with the battery out, I will be able to place the neck strap onto the camera. So let's start with this slot that is visible now that I have removed the battery. I'm going to take one of the ends of the neck strap. I'm going to pass it through the hole just like you do with a needle. And it's very important here that I go over the current strap, do the second one. And the most important part over here, if you're able to see my fingers, is to bring the strap back and put it over the original one to ensure that the strap is going to stay locked and the camera is going to be properly held. I'm going to rotate the camera and repeat the same procedure on the other side. I'm going to bring the strap through this needle hole, put it over, following the same direction of the original one, the long strap, the long end. Once again, very important, you need to bring it back over the original one, as you can see. Push it through and make sure that it's tight so the camera is safe. Once this has been performed, all you have to do is to bring the camera, strap, neck strap around your neck. Place the battery back and the camera is ready for your inspection. So this is how the neck strap works. By allowing you to put the camera down, rest on your abdomen and have two hands available to do other operations, opening panels and continue with your activities. So this is it for today. I hope that you found this informative. And if you have any more questions, feel free to reach out at info at Have a good one.